Hello, you metal pilgrims, and welcome to the new episode of our interview series, the first one this year. Our today's guest is the bass player of the thrash death metal band Nervosa, Mia Wallace. Me and I, among other things, will be speaking about the band's upcoming studio release, Perpetual Chaos, the process behind it, reinventing and reimagining Nervosa with a new lineup, the atmosphere in the band, and much much more. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim channel on YouTube, join our communities on Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, or any other social media you actually hang out at to submit your questions for all future interview guests. Stay tuned with the updates and for more exclusive rock and metal content. Here you go! Hey Mia, how are you? Hey, I'm fine. And you? Oh, good, good. It's uh, it's the start of the year. It looks promising. Uh, hopefully, it's gonna be better than the previous one, right? Yeah, I hope so too. Absolutely, absolutely. Where are you at the moment? I am in Italy. Oh, in Italy. Okay. How are things yeah. there with the with the pandemics and all this craziness that is going on? Um, quite con under control, mm -hmm. and we are we are waiting for the vaccine. Yeah, and knows. I have some kind of uh, probabilities to be vaccine around May, maybe oh. I don't know. Because I, uh, as a teacher, I belong to the category that is considered a little bit in danger. Mm -hmm. So I will be vaccine before uh, regular people, if I oh. can say. Yeah. So maybe, maybe in May I will be vaccine <sighs> and I will be able to travel. Yeah, this yeah. would be great. I, just like millions of other people around the world, miss traveling so much that uh, uh, I think this is the longest I've been at home uh, since, I don't know, since like forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but uh, about the good stuff, the big news about you guys, Nervosa, is that, um, you know, you guys are about to release a new album, Perpetual Chaos, on January 22nd. Congrats on finishing it up. During the pandemics, yeah, <laughs> I know Thank it can you. be. I know it can be <laughs> tough, right? I mean, it's um, with all the travel and restrictions and everything, just all together. So, could you just talk a bit about, you know, the creative process behind it? How did it, all of this come together into this one piece? Uh, it has been uh, quite easy, I have to say, because I, I recorded other uh, other albums with different uh, bands, and I have to say that with with Prika and these girls, seems like everything is is easy or smooth. I mm -hmm. don't know. Maybe because we are all women and we, I don't know, we we Get understand each other <laughs> in a you know in a snap of fingers. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, we started, of course, using internet and exchanging the files. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, using whatever we transfer, what was available. We 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 were using. And of course, uh, Prika create most of the songs. Mm -hmm. No, create everything, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I'm sorry. She create everything, and she wrote lyrics and uh, everything. And she was, she she is still really not saying kind, but she is really for freedom. You know, mm -hmm. if you feel like you want to do something. Feel free to do it, and we will decide together what's the better thing to to put on a on a song. And we did it. I did it, mm -hmm. and I was a bit uh, worried uh, or concerned that that maybe my style, because I'm coming from a completely different absolutely yeah. um, ambient, like black metal, and you know the riffing is really different. So I was like. Well, let's try it. If mm -hmm. she will like it, I will be happy. And mm -hmm. she liked it a yeah. lot. And I was really, really, really happy about it. Uh, because, yes, I changed a bit my style, but not so much. Mm -hmm. Indeed, you can you can maybe listen a little bit of black metal also mm -hmm. in the new yeah, album. Yeah, maybe. And I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's my uh, fault or... My, my contribution, but I think that all together mixed, you know, came out, uh, you know, with different styles. Yeah. So the process was really, came out really natural because everybody was putting inside of um, this new album uh, our, our own style. Mm -hmm. 
and Perpetual Chaos came out. Yeah, nice. Great to hear yeah. that. And the, you mentioned, you know, you started talking about this briefly, but uh, this is your first album with Nervosa after a band's reboot, if you will, right? I mean, let's just call it like this. And with so many, you know, new band members and guys coming from different genres, as you said, you are from black metal and uh, so on and so forth. Um, did you guys actually try to tune yourself down and match the existing sound of the band that everyone is used to or just considered it a completely new, fresh start and just you know, went all in with your ideas? Um, we simply, we, we simply um, listened to what Prika um, created, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, we were, uh, I mean, I'm talking about me, I was aware about the style of Nervosa, yeah. but I was also aware that the previous members were not there anymore. So, for example, in my case, I um, I have a totally different style from the previous basses mm -hmm. because she was playing with fingers. I'm playing with uh, no, the plectrum, the, the, yeah. the pick, yeah. you know. And then I'm not playing one million uh, notes per second. I'm not following the, the guitar like mm -hmm. I am. I am like a guitar, but my tu my tune is a little bit lower. No, I I play like I want to you know, um, feel what's missing with the guitar. Mm -hmm. So for me, bass is something that has to push the guitar up, mm -hmm. you know, but that's not to be like um, a challenge between the two instruments. Everything has to be melted. And, and uh, I'm not saying that the previous bass was not good. On the contrary, she. I think in my opinion, she was technically even better than me. <laughs> But uh, my style is totally different. So I, I talk really openly to Prick. I said, this is my style. And I honestly think that if I have to force my style, this will not be good. It will come out not natural. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will make you listen what's my style, what I will do on, on your songs. And you will say to me, if it's okay for you, Cool. If it's not okay for you, well, there are m many bases, you know, good bases, but even better than my than me. But this is my style. And when she uh, heard my bass lines, and I remember I did uh, as a um, audition, I did per, uh, kill the silence. Uh -huh. Sorry, oh, yeah? Yeah. I did kill yeah. the silence. But of course, I did. With my style, she said to me, that's exactly what I was searching for. Nice. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect fit, then. <laughs> no, I, I got to say, I was able to listen to the album um, a little bit earlier than most of the other mortal human beings uh, on this planet. <laughs> uh, and I got to say that, you know, despite you all coming from different backgrounds and just reassembling last year, you guys sound extremely coherent. Uh, it, like, it sounds like you guys have been playing for a very long time, you know, together. And especially the rhythm section, I think it's very vigorous, it's strong, it's powerful. I actually enjoyed it a lot. Um, was it actually, how was it, you know, getting used to Eleni Nota? Uh, for you, it's crucial, right? I mean, well, was it seamless or you had some rough edges that you had to work around at first? When, when I started to, to hear to Eleni, uh style i was like wow first i was like shocked because mm -hmm. she's so tiny you know <laughs> she's <true>. so <laughs> she, she is like i don't know like um something cute that you want to hide you know like and then you put her uh behind the drum and she became satan <laughs> she's and i was like wow <laughs> She's like a machine, and but but in my case, I I immediately clicked with her mm -hmm. style. So if I have to say, I I immediately felt comfortable mm -hmm. playing with her, and then also with Prika, Prika playing uh, really um, technical stuff, but I can enter totally mm -hmm. perfectly in uh, her mindset you this know this is amazing great to hear. yeah that's amazing i'm not talking about diva of course because it's a totally different thing from the rhythm 
rhythmic yeah, exactly part. your rhythm section yeah. is, is a backbone yeah. you guys create a backbone on which you yeah. know diva can experiment and like put add an yeah. extra layer on later on right yeah if you will. um how's the overall atmosphere with the band uh, right now did you guys already click all of you with diva and everyone feel like everything's great at this point we we are daily in contact we are oh, sending so messages <laughs> every day and we are sending videos of us doing <laughs> stupid things and the most beautiful thing is that this is all, of course a super private uh, chat we yeah. have and we are sending each other i don't know videos from the morning the morning awakening you know when we are all hey hello girls look at me hey i i'm a wreck that's amazing that's what i i probably always looked for in my entire life as a musician you know mm -hmm. to bond like this and to feel free to not hiding myself you know, to, to them because they are also friends mm -hmm. so that's 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 amazing and this is the first time in 25 years that I experienced mm -hmm. something like this. This is great. Great to hear that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you've also invited two guest vocalists on this record, right? Uh, Shmir from Destruction and Eric yeah. of uh, Flots and Yatsam. Uh, yeah. Whose idea was that? And did you, what do you think those guys brought on the record in terms of the sound? Wow. Uh, the idea came, of course, from Prika mm -hmm. and... When I heard um, their their lines, their their vocal lines, I was like, "Well, I I understand why you chose them mm -hmm. because they really put uh, something um, particular on um, mm -hmm. on the two songs they made, you know. So um, and they are really fitting the style. So." You will hear, and people will hear the two songs that uh, Schmier and um, Eric uh, put in, the, in in this album, and you will be astonished because I honestly think they are perfect. Yeah, it's they interesting. Yeah, repeating really it, and especially because they have such different vocals. But you know, yeah. b both of those guys actually, you know, clicked with Diva. It feels like you know, it's exactly, great. exactly. That was not easy. But the, the the two different styles clicked immediately with mm -hmm. Diva style. So, hey, absolutely. While we're talking about the songs, by the way, do you have a favorite favorite one on the record, or yeah, it's an impossible favorite one? Yeah. Okay, I would say to you honestly, I felt really uh, excited when I recorded first when I heard, and second when I recorded uh, Rebel Soul. Oh, really? I thought yeah. it would go with Pursuit by Judgment. I have no idea why, but I just... Because I maybe it's a little bit more black metal uh -huh. I don't know. Uh -huh. But Rebel Soul, come on, is really motor radish, mm -hmm. we yeah. can say. Uh -huh. And I am, a, I am a maniac for motorheads. Dude, so. I'm, I'm a freaking... I'm with you on this one. I'm shaking your hand uh, virtually on this one. Met Lemmy multiple times. I actually traveled around the world. Wow. Saw them on on multiple continents throughout the years. Have a gazillion vinyls over here as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, for for me, it's a huge inspiration. I have to say, you know, also when I'm doing this like with the bass, I'm this is, always thinking about him. Yeah. You won't believe that, Mia. But my next question would be, you know, who would be your absolute all-time favorite bass player but i guess that question is out of the way at this point right <laughs> <laughs> no i have to say that to add also peter Steele. okay okay yeah yeah but not not for uh, his appearance because he is completely, it's completely out thing. of my yeah you know he, is a, he was a giant but uh for her uh, his style he is number one because he created really a sound different from the other sounds for yeah. bass but if i have to say you know 100 percent bassist for appearance and and uh, style let me yeah Lammy <laughs> is the godfather of rock and roll no matter exactly. how you put it and all the other styles that come out of it so exactly 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm with you on this one. <laughs> um, so what what kind of plans you guys set for yourself for next year of oh, this year already? It's 21 already. Uh, any plans for a live tour? I know it's kind of hard right now to be sure of anything, but um, anything you guys are planning? The thing is, once we are all vaccines, mm -hmm. we are able to travel. So from from that moment you will not stop us <laughs> you know <laughs> because we will more <laughs> we will conquer the world but you know the this vaccine is really important for us because they are giving you once you are vaccine you will receive this uh, card yeah, i don't know something like yeah. yeah something that uh, say you, that you are not dangerous for mm -hmm. for people so we are waiting to be vaccinated and then we will start touring worldwide. Yeah. It's just a matter also of, you know, fans around the globe to get vaccinated as well. Because, you know, yeah. th this is the thing. If you guys get vaccinated, but I or, you yeah. know, people over here don't, I mean, you cannot come. And this sucks. Of course. And it actually, you know, kind of raises this. I know it's more of a philosophical question, I guess, but what do you think will actually happen to the music industry and Metal One in particular after this pandemic? I mean, will we get back to normal or you think, you know, digital era will kind of start taking over, you know, slowly after this? Alt enough, I think, because uh, there will be more room for digital music, of course, mm -hmm. but metal heads are really uh, hard to stop when it's when it's related to to concerts because uh going to concert live concerts it's it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. it's something completely different you know because you can feel the energy from musicians and everybody you know when you are in the, to the mosh pits you know there's something this is something that you cannot um live with with digital music Absolutely. you know this is a, a physical experience and people need it uh me too for yeah. example uh, i really need this this moment you know to unleash my demons and unleash my frustrations and i do on stage when i'm not on stage i'm going to concert what well, i was going to concerts <laughs> but yeah but it's, it's really um, a moment that metal heads need, uh, in my opinion. So they will push no matter what, but concert will live forever. I agree. In my you. opinion, online concerts are great for the time being. I mean, it's kind of one thing we have to do right now to stay sane. Yeah. But at the same time, rock and roll and metal lives in clubs and sweaty clubs and festivals. You know. Drinking beer with a random guy or juice. No one cares what you drink in reality. It's exactly. Just, yeah, this is this yeah. is rock and roll. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, moving away from uh, from that, but kind of staying on topic, you know. But uh, since we're talking about touring, um, what your absolute, you know, one band that you would die uh, for to play with on stage? Do you have one? Out of the ones that to, still still exist, taken water to play <laughs> to play with Nervosa, like yes. we would like yeah. to play. Mm, I would have say type a negative, but yeah. that's not possible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. that would be really a huge experience for me to to see them live. You know, because I never saw them live. So yeah, I would say type a negative or. Oh, this is the main band I would like to okay. to play with. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, next question is a tricky one. Um, what is your guilty pleasure and uh, in terms of music? What do you blast when you're drunk if it's not metal? Backstreet Boys, Spice Girls. Mm, no, honestly, this is this is not something that I am ashamed to to say because I listen to almost all kind of music mm -hmm. and I am um, I really like every kind of music that give me energy or positive energy so um, I can say I listen to maybe sometimes the EBM music <laughs> or techno music really? but if I am in the mood what I don't care let's, let's you know let's dance I don't care we 
in Malaga, for example, we were listening to Lady Gaga. <laughs> you know, after an, an entire day uh, of work, we were like, hey, come on, let's dance a bit, you know, like, and we, we were dancing with Madonna or Lady Gaga. <laughs> I know. We are all the same, you know. Let's let's have good 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 energy. That's, That's the most important. Maybe thing. you should uh, make a thrash death metal cover on Alejandro. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> this would be fun. Lady Gaga performed with Metallica, right? I mean, she did walk into the flame. I yeah. don't know what to expect <laughs> from, from her anymore. <laughs> it's true, right? And in the last one, this is something we usually do to close the the episode. And since it's the very first. Um, the very first uh, interview episode of the year. I'm I'm very curious to see. <laughs> Do you hear what you? Uh... Yes, you are. You are absolutely. Uh, what is your one absolute craziest touring story from all of your life? Something that you can legally share, you know, but um, but something that would actually kick ass. Well. I will say to you that the, the most crazy episodes happened in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Argentina. Okay, <laughs> I see. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't because what happens in Argentina stays in Argentina as far, as far as I know. I lived in Latin America for quite a long time and my best friend is from Buenos Aires. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's yeah. a crazy thing. <laughs> But, but um, I mean, in, in uh, during tour, uh, tour, tour life is, is um, a constellation of crazy events. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, but actually, I think the most shocking moment was like in Argentina. Yes. And then, of course, I remember a lot of bad memories during uh, mm. my career with Triumph of Death. And I'm really, really okay now that I'm not playing this band anymore. Really? So, but this is part of what, will, it's better not to, to live when you are a musician. So I'm really glad mm -hmm. that um, now I am in Nervosa and I'm still in good uh, terms with Abbott, for example. We are very good friends. Mm -hmm. And then there's Kitty and Camera. And yeah, I'm happy like now. I'm really in a comfort zone now. That's good. Good to hear. Yeah. Absolutely. Mia, thank you so much for your time. Happy, Happy New you. Year. And, uh, you know, uh, congrats on, uh, you know, on the release which is coming. Any last message for the fans? Anything you want to share with them? Oh, my, my, my sentence is always never give up yeah. and keep on, keep on rock and roll. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mia, for your time. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. And just a reminder for, for everyone who is going to be watching us, uh, Perpetual Chaos by Nervosa is out on January 22nd via Napalm Records. Make sure you check it out. It's a great record. Had a chance to listen to it. And it's absolutely amazing thrash death metal record. Uh, thank you so much, Mia. Keep rocking. Bye. Thanks. See ya. Thanks.